Hey everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat and I'm talking today with Fabio. Hello. Hi Christian, thanks for having me. It's great to have you and for so it's brand new. I mean, this is like as new as you get, like a, you've known a week, a solid yeah. week though. But for folks that don't know you, Fabio, who are you, where are you and what do you do? So hi, my name is Fabio Bonolo. Um, as you maybe hear it out, I am from Switzerland, um, originally Italian. So uh, as I like to say, I am a, a paper Swiss guy. <laughs> um, and actually, I am uh, the head of modern work at uh, TechTask uh, in Solothurn, beautiful Solothurn in the middle of Switzerland. Um, and uh, I also am studying right now for a master's degree in business and IT consulting. Um, and yeah, my role are, are uh, different. So for in one project, I'm change manager. In the other project, I'm a consultant or a project uh, manager. So it really depends on what, uh, what the project is about and what the, the customer needs from us or from me. I didn't even think of that. I, I have my Swiss Army watch, it's, but it's upstairs. <laughs> oh, dang it. I could have been, you know, I'm sorry. Do you have a Swiss Army knife maybe? <laughs> I don't. I don't. But I have the watch. It's funny. When I was over in Geneva a few years ago and I went into the Swiss Army store, all the, what, the watches, and I just walk mm -hmm. in wearing it. And the guy glances. He's like, oh, you've got a – then he names the model of it. And I'm like, okay, sure, sure. You know. <laughs> uh, but I just thought yeah, that we was – we're really uh, proud of him. Had that, that connection, yeah. And then the, the other side, so it's a beautiful country that people have not been over to Switzerland, but I'll, I'll tell you, Geneva was incredibly boring. It's not yeah, a, light, uh, a nightlife town. It's, it's a... No, 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 it is not. So if you want to have nightlife, you have to go to Zurich. Right. If you want to have uh, a beautiful uh, outside, beautiful city, uh, you have to go to Lucerne. Yeah. <laughs> well, so... So tell us, so uh, your, your focus here, is, so you're an M365 uh, MVP like myself. And yet, of course, there's a lot of products that were within that. And your specialization, specialization is co-pilot. So kind of what's your passion? What's, what's the, the, what are the big topics? What are you talking about now out in the community? Well, um, it's, it's really new technology, right? So um, everybody says he's an expert in, in no time. So for me, it was like um, getting myself into the topic, learning about the topic, and what you came, what what you start with, you start with the user interface, which is prompting. So, and that but that was, I think, my first article or my first blog article that I wrote about prompting. So I dove in, uh, dived into the topic, and uh, the more the the more the longer I uh, went into the the whole back ground of a co-pilot, how the semantic index works, how uh, it works with uh, with privacy, uh, how everything works together in, in M365, how it is going um, with, with plugins in Copilot Studio, for example. So for me, the, the main challenge was that I am, I come from the business, so I am not a developer. And I had to, to look at this, these technologies um, from, from a business perspective, mm -hmm. to learn it, uh, to use it, and to leverage it as well as uh, giving my knowledge that I uh, built over the, the time um, back to my community. Well, that's, hey, it's another, uh, like my, my undergrad is in marketing, uh, mm -hmm. my, you know, then in MBA, but so I'm very much on the business side, but the same, the same thing is that my, I started my career as a business analyst. And so my job was <laughs> to go and dissect, uh, understand and dissect complex technical problems Mm -hmm. and feed that into the business, help them understand, and then translate the business over mm -hmm. to the technical folks. And mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, there's a lot of need for that around co-pilot, around AI in general. Oh, and, yes. Absolutely. You know, one of my peers and good friends has started doing, I know that a lot of organizations are doing like co-pilot readiness. Mm -hmm. And I really like her approach, which is to talk extensively about you know, that, like you said, like the understanding the security aspects of it, mm -hmm. understanding the, the governance, the information architecture, like going in, built, making sure that you've got that, your data cleaned up and organized to mm. perform better, which are, mm. you know, we, we always knew that was, you're supposed to do those things, but I think it's, <laughs> it's, 
uh, you know, information management, the complexity of knowledge management was not enough to convince a lot of organizations. Now, AI has scared them into going and becoming compliant around their information architecture. I'm okay with it's, <laughs> I, I always say it's the data chaos reloaded because we had, we had this bad example with Microsoft Teams. So when the pandemic hit, everybody uh, had to go quickly into Microsoft Teams. Nobody thought of governance, nobody thought of privacy, nobody thought um, of structure, of life cycle, those things. And uh, it hit back and many, many organizations, big ones, uh, also the SMEs. Uh, had a lot of trouble and had a lot of investment to do to to clean up the mess that they unwillingly did. Yeah. And um, one might think that uh, we should have learned <laughs> from from the past, but yeah, you say it. Uh, well, people we, we, learned, we, we then consultants really... <laughs> would not have jobs. I mean, so. yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that's true. But but here, I think it's more more relevant because everybody. It's, it's not an urgency as it was uh, while the pan, uh, with the pandemic. It's like the, as I say, the future of the work, the AI technology, how it is today, um, especially the generative AI like Copilot um, is the future of the work and nobody wants to miss out. So they, they have to, they want to, they have the motivation for it. Um, and, but it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. Well, it, it's, I always, I like doing the comparison to Delve. And when Delve mm -hmm. was, I don't know if you were paying attention to it at, at Microsoft at that time, but the when mm -hmm. Delve was released um, and people went in a Delve, of course, you turn it on and there's no data there. It hasn't learned from anything. So it's like the beginning of yep. like what we have now with Copilot. And so people were frustrated by this awful user experience because there's no data within that. The difference here is that you turn it on, it has its knowledge base. If it's a public version, if it's you know, chat GPT and it's going out to the internet. You've got Copilot, which is pointed then at your organizational data. Uh, mm. you, but you still have to, like some people will say, well, I put in a prompt. I didn't get the you know, good results. And like, well, Absolutely. it needs time mm. to learn. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how, how you explain that. Like how, how does a person get a better user experience out of Copilot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say there are two success factors. So when you when you buy the Copilot licenses, it is plug and play. You stick it in and it works. It is there. You can use it. And those two success factors are the one thing, the data governance, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, Copilot should only be able to find information and data that he's, he is allowed to find. And uh, the other thing, of course, is, uh, is the training and the user adoption and the change uh, aspects of, um, of, of the implementation. It's not only co-pilot, it's also when I think about M365 as a whole. I always say you can, you can put on the best technology, the best, technology, the best uh, technical solution. It doesn't have any value if the people or the organizations behind it don't know how to use them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the, the easiest explanation that I have. And, and so is co-pilot. So if you don't invest in, in change, in, you don't, if you don't invest in, in the right prompting, if you don't invest in the understanding of co-pilot, you won't be happy. Nobody will be happy. Right. That's, that's, uh, that's clear. Also, um, another part of, of the, the, the unhappiness that you talked about, right? So I'm prompting something and it doesn't uh, give me a response that I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. When I go to chat GPT, it's better. So how many yeah. times did I hear that attraction? Yep. And that is something that, that I always preach about, <laughs> really preach about. It's co-pilot is so heavy. It has all this privacy um, settings, this um, security settings built within, standardized within. And ChatGPT doesn't have that. Right. And therefore it's more lighter, it's more creative. And the prompts don't have to be as precise as they have to be in Copilot. But uh, in the long term, ev every organization, especially the big ones, they have to look at privacy, they have to look at security, they have to look at um, governance and their Copilot um, is the way to go. And it will make so much progress. I am so sure about it. Well, it's, it's uh, it again, having been in the information management space for the last 20 plus years, uh, it, you know, it's like when you're going in and refining the search experience 
Uh, you know, the mm -hmm. search where it's strongest in Hue when you're looking at massive amounts of, of content and data uh, is that you, you need to know something about, again, the what's the classification, the structure, the information architecture of that data? Am I going to go search all systems for this data or am I looking for a specific answer? And I know it's this subset of data over in this location. And you need to think of Copilot more in that realm. There's your organizational data. But now even when you have like every SharePoint site can have Copilot. So mm -hmm, if I, well, mm -hmm. if I know yeah, that, I... hey, I'm going to need to go to project XYZ where I know it has this data that I know, you know, then how to prompt, how to act, you know, what to ask, you know, uh, the you know, Copilot for that location to get what I mm -hmm. need versus, mm -hmm. hey, am I going to the, the internet and asking a general broad question where it's going mm -hmm. out to all of that massive data? And so it, it is just different. You're right. And that, so it's a training issue more than anything. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, as I mentioned before, I am studying uh, for a master's degree and I, um, I will do my, my master's semester. So my, my master thesis, I will do it in 2026. And I already have my thesis in mind in where um, the, the AI world or the working world, the modern working world will, will develop itself. So right now, you talked about the searching experience, right? So we are in a clicking culture, I say, I, say, I, 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 I call it. So yeah. we are clicking through to search things. We are clicking through the different tools that we have, web application, desktop application, etc. In the future, I can imagine, my thesis is that in the future, you have a user interface with, a, with an AI. It can be co-pilot, it can be something else. And your whole tool landscape, your whole data is connected into this uh, artificial intelligence or in this user interface. And in the end, you won't be clicking yourself through your day, but you will be prompting your tasks. You will be writing what, what you have to do. And uh, when you look at, at topics like Copilot Studio, for example, where you can um, extend the Copilot, build your own Copilots with data from Salesforce, SAP, and so on, ServiceNow, um, the technology develops itself in this, um, in this direction. And therefore, it is a technical topic, yes, but in the end that it can um, leverage its potential that it has. It is a training. It is a training topic. Yeah, it is. I it I love the concept the of 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 AI as a like almost a middleware component to all of these systems. Like we yeah. are rapidly. If you think of like you know uh, if this and that you know IFTT uh, uh, IFTTT or uh, uh, Zapier or one of those you know, connectors where <laughs> I say, hey, I want to be able to ask my I won't say her name, but the device in my window there. I want to ask you to go and create this task and then she can go create that in to do, which then shows up a task into my phone, but take these complex multi-product, you know, and through the cl cloud connect. So one place to make a request to put in your prompt and that it understands that it needs to go and connect with these other outside mm -hmm. systems to finish this task. That it's, it's this service desk uh, or not service desk, uh, a, a, Again, well, again, this this middleware component model, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that is the the future of where the, this is going. So I could, it, interesting based on other models or playbooks, there's different phrasing out there for it, that it can start to do very complex tasks. Like as a marketer, I was talking to a friend who builds apps, was saying like, why has, uh, you know, you in marketing, why can't I have it where it triggers and knows that I've done a blog post. I then want to go and post it to share it out a summary with the title and the link and relevant hashtags. I want to share that out to Twitter, LinkedIn, Mastodon, Blue Sky, you know, uh, Instagram, all these mm -hmm. different places. Mm -hmm. I always want it to have an image, either the lead image from it or create an image. It should be able to go and take you know, understand the limitations of the image of the images of the titles of the you know, character length of each one of those. And, but on the trigger of me posting to my blog, go and schedule it and push those out without me doing anything. Like where, where is that at? And I, I think that's, <laughs> we're rapidly approaching that, yeah. that stage. 
And I'm sure there's somebody who will watch this and be like, oh yeah, we've gone and we've built that, but it's, it's a private product. I'm like, yeah, but I, I want it publicly available people. It's, it's no good to us if you're, <laughs> if you, you're keeping it inside your uh, company. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a really interesting thought. And um, what, what comes to mind to me is the power platform. This is the yep. forerunner for, for such workflows, for such apps. Um, but it isn't so so good developed. So, for example, if I want to to do something on LinkedIn, so the connector there doesn't work very good. <laughs> so right. uh, it is really limited. Um, but that's where it's going. So the Power Platform, I think, was the forerunner for for all AI technologies, for all workflows, streamlined, um, be it internally, be it externally. Um, and and Copilot is developing, or Microsoft is developing um, uh, in this direction. Yeah. The other thing that that uh, many of us, um, yeah, maybe uh, underestimate is is the privacy uh, part because, for example, in the European Union, there has been um, published right last week, first of August, as a so-called AI Act. So these are laws how an AI um, should work, what it can do, what it is prohibited to do. Uh, in the European Union. So there will be governments who will, um, yeah, restrict some things, which hinders a little bit the development, of course. Yep. Um, but that's that's the main point that we have to, to think about also when we think about, yeah, publishing externally, getting data externally, et cetera. Um, that is something that we shouldn't under underestimate, of course. Let me ask you back to the community stuff. Like, what are you, what are you doing in the community? What's what's the user group situation over where you live, or what are you what are you involved in on the community side? Yeah, so um, in Switzerland, we uh, so the community here is more focused on the Dach region, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland, because Switzerland is too small of a country to have its own big community. It has its own community, of course. Uh, we do like some meetups uh, and things like that. Um, but in, in the high, in the high levels, we have like 100, um, attendees uh, for, 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 as for in Germany, we have like a thousand because it's, it's a much bigger, um, bigger country. Um, myself, I can, I can tell you about what I do myself. So I have like uh, free hashtags or free topics, um, that I cover. So first, uh, the first one is uh, future of modern work, which is also my motto, um, where I look into the roadmap, for example, of M365, of Copilot, where I uh, do some announcement of what's, what's, what will be developed or will be rolled out in the future. So I do it monthly. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that I do, we are talking about AI. This is the future of modern work. So I, I, I am talking about the digital workplace um, for, for the end users. And this is the future. The second one is Copilot Stories. This is my blog. Um, where I um, write about uh, Copilot, ChatGPT, AI in general. Um, yeah, what 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 is uh, actual in the mo in the in, in, in at the moment? And the third one is uh, M365 updates, where I do um, weekly updates from the message center, um, especially for the end users. So no admin stuff, <laughs> only feature stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and and so the. That's 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 that, and we have a lot of um, meetups online and in person uh, in the whole Dach region, where I have the great possibility to act as a speaker as well. And these are very good um, uh, frequented events from from a lot of attendees, German speaking attendees. Uh, and I would like to say that uh, in the Dach region, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland, we are in a little bit of a bubble. I I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's how it's in the USA. I think the bubble is a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it, I mean, well, here, I mean, it's so diverse that by by state, by region of you know, yeah. level of activity, and and it so it kind of ebbs and flows, and uh, you know, it, so it, you know, it all just depends on where you're based. But mm -hmm. no, I, I I like the uh, I, I, one thing I always tell people too is that uh, if you're trying to understand well what's going on in my region, one of the first things that you should do is identify and this is your Fabio a great example yeah. like if you want to know what's going on locally in that region like connect with Fabio go look yeah. at where is he speaking what is what is he doing where is he interacting and you'll get a good sense of what's happening within that that community absolutely and absolutely. of course there's uh one of the best fast tracks to becoming an MVP 
uh, is if you don't have a community in the area, I mean, even if you've got community activities, you could go and get involved. That's how you start. Yep, um, absolutely. Just, but to start a user group, to get involved and to do that year in, year out, if that's what your passion is, uh, that is a great fast track a way to get that recognition. Absolutely. And, well, yeah, Fabio, so it, 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 I know there's a, there's a <laughs> lot we go through. One last thing here before we go, yeah. I, I, I do want, I don't know if you already have plans to, but you need to attend if you're able to the MVP summit next week. Yeah, I will. Definitely. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> you need to register before it fills up. It will fill up. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, that is the, I always say that's for brand new MVPs. It's the best perk. It's yeah. the greatest opportunity to meet your peers as well as the Microsoft community. Absolutely. And, well, Fabio, really appreciate your time. And for folks that want to reach out and get in touch with you, where are you most social? Where can people find you online? Yeah, well, I'm very actively on uh, LinkedIn. So that's my, uh, my main platform. So you can connect me through LinkedIn directly. Um, also through my website, uh, fabiobonolo.com. So really easy to, uh, to remember. And these are my, my main channels. And of course, in some, uh, some events, um, be it online or in person in the Dach region. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Christian.